So this is going to be a short form project that you that we're going to be talking about today. So it's basically Vampire Survivors meets Wipeout. So you'll just go down these pins. These pins will appear out of the ground and you'll go down into one of these things and that will be like another bonus. So it, it makes dying fun. Hi everyone and welcome to the Polygon Forest. I am indie developer Vin Hill and I am joined by the other indie developer Christopher Jarvis. Hello. Uh, so today we are on the the endless journey that is Chris tries to find another prototype um, <laughs> <laughs> because uh, the Lantern Era is still happening, right? Yes, the Lantern Era is happening, but it's a multi-year project, multiple dev project, yep. and so. Uh, I was, yeah. So I was reading Chris Zukowski's blog at the end of the year. He does them, how to end, how to market an indie game, and he was saying about middle games and that a lot of devs miss the middle games out and um, they go straight to the multi-year, multi-dev project and they need to learn how to finish a game, especially if they're like very small teams or like solo plus teams, yeah. like like what I am. So I'm working with like two people at the moment. Um, so. Yeah, I, the lantern is still still going ahead. I just have shift focus for now, so I'm just putting a pin in the lantern here just for a few months. Got you. Yeah. So this is going to be decided. a short form project that you that we're going to be talking about today, which is just to um, stretch your legs in terms of finishing games and and doing all that sort of good stuff. Yeah, basically, I looked at the year ahead. Everyone does a bit of self reflection over the holidays, mm. and. I could have been in the situation where I've got one game released, unsure of what's going to happen after that game's released, um, and with nothing else potentially to show for it. So this way, at least, I'll definitely get a game out within the ne in, within the next few months. Got you. So that's something that I can build on. That's the whole idea. Yeah. Very cool. All right, cool. So do, are we going to jump straight into this so you can actually see it, or...? Yeah, sure, yeah. All right. Um, so it's... it's The idea is basically... Uh, what is the idea? So it's basically Vampire <laughs> Survivors... Vampire Survivors meets Wipeout. Um, so you've got a spaceship. So it's a bit like Asteroids as well. So you're a spaceship and you're flying around and you're automatically shooting a laser that will, will get upgraded. Yeah. And you fly around and you have to kill these monsters which don't go for you yet they just kind of spawn and right spill out all over the place um i mean how do they repopulate is the real question um are they just is there a something going mating. on in the middle right okay something's yeah. going on yeah they're mating right, it should just <laughs> and be like a of... whirlwind with like a queen in the middle or something yeah this is getting out of control but yeah go ahead yeah <laughs> uh, and the idea is that yeah you'll fly around and you'll shoot your laser you'll have more than one weapon though like vampire survivors you'll have like multiple you'll have multiple weapons mm. multiple ways of um shooting things um but similar to vampire survivors it's just gonna be one button just look you know just focusing on where you go so you can focus on the macro and micro um you know ability to where you go is going to help you or not help you and decide whether or not you pick up weapons or leave weapons. Got you. Um, and then upgrading, so upgrading all your weapons. So that's 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 the major aspect of the game. But what makes this game slightly different as well is that when you die, so it's going to be round-based, like a, a rogue light, right. um, or a rogue light, depending on what's accurate, I never know. So a rogue, you a will. rogue like is they are, every time you die, like you restart from complete scratch, and there's nothing, ah. like you you don't carry anything over. But a rogue light, like I hate how similar these titles are. So it, it's very annoying. Yeah. Uh, a rogue light, you you carry over some of your abilities that you've gained in your last, either abilities or items. Like it's really debatable. Like as long if you carry anything though over from your previous run, then it's a rogue light. Ah, okay. But yeah, it'd be a roguelite. So at the end of the at the end of the round, you're getting killed and your your life is down to zero. It will shout like the screen will come up with like press eject and it'll be like spacebar yep. or one of the keys on the keypad. Oh yeah, I'm playing it on the controller. Nice. Um, 
and then it will turn into Plinko, like so. So you won't be able to, to fire. Um, so you'll just go down these pins. These pins will appear out of the ground and you'll go down into one of these things and that will be like another bonus. So it, it makes dying fun. Right. Yeah, that's a good way of doing it. So you're going to have like rewards or whatever, like in the in the bottom tray. So down. yeah, here there'll be rewards and they'll be all shiny and bright, like you've won something. So it'll be like an extra life. So maybe the maybe the game will keep going. So maybe you'll get another life. Mm. Uh, maybe you'll get a load of points. Maybe you'll get an upgrade. Um, and, you know, some will be rare and some will be common. Um, yeah. Very cool. And I, and yeah, so you'll be, you won't be able to fly, but I've not coded that in yet. So you can't and stall. With the Plinko, it's really difficult. So with the Plinko pins, the game is really hard. Yeah. Um, and then that's why the Plinko pins disappear usually during normal normal game. Yeah. If that makes sense. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And it, you said the question before. If you hang out at the bottom, gravity will just go up. If you hang out to the left, gravity will just go right. If you hang out to the right, gravity will just go left when you die. So that you play the full, at least half of a Plinko board, you'll play half of it. So you can't try to land in the where you want to land. Yeah, so, maybe um, um, maybe the rewards just aren't visible until like the end of the end of the round. Like that would be the easy way of solving it. And then like... A, people won't be incentivized to hang out near the bottom or whatever if, if you didn't want yeah. to mess around with the orientation it stuff. could be random it could be random so you never know yeah. although they could still want to hang out near the bottom hmm because they, they can't they control the ship yeah yeah they wouldn't want to you hang can't out control because, the ship. yeah yeah because if you hung hmm. out near the bottom right near like the entrance of a thing like if it like you die and like he ejects out or whatever and then he's fallen down and then the rewards appear like as you're falling then you're like crap like why why did i bother hanging out like it's still random you know what i mean like even if you do yeah. hang out at the bottom in that sense you know like you're still solving the problem i guess but yeah it's just well i yeah i, would I just know why because every pin you hit every pin you hit you get a reward so the incentive would be to be at the top of the plinko board because you the more pins oh, yeah. you hit yeah the 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 more points you get right so it's a is that the the reward system is a points based thing or like how so, do, how do you win is the real question. It's um it's same as Vampire Survivor, so you can upgrade weapons and abilities, uh, and then you can unlock levels. So there'll be like four arenas, um, and there'll be at least and there'll be like four upgrades. I've written out a load of um, weapon ideas, mm. physics based weapon ideas as well, so that yeah. Cool. Have you got any ideas like abilities and stuff? Yeah, so there'll be like a laser that's guided, like um, a beam, so it'll be like a line renderer. Yeah. There'll be like a mace, like in um, you know Sonic One and Two, where Robotnik's got the mace that swings underneath his little capsule okay. thing. Yeah, yeah. So it'll be like that, um, except it won't be gravity. It will just there'll be no gravity, so you can play the game where you can move around yeah and it will swing the mace because it'll be physics based Got it, yeah. so you can actually swing the mace based on you moving so again it's a bit more interesting locomotion than vampire survivors um there'll be like a whip and it'll have a few um it'd be like lines and uh it'd be like sticks and joints mm. so like an electric whip and so again you can whip it around just won't have as much mass as the mace and it won't have a different shape um and there'll be missiles Similar to like the in Vampire Survivors when you've got the Bibles that rotate around you, you'll have like missiles that will rotate around you. Yeah, uh, that's, as that's well. You should check out um, like the old um, shoot 'em up, like the shmups or whatever, like the old um, yeah, the vertical. They've like, got good. They've games. got good lasers. Yeah, uh, side like, scrolling. Yeah, go and look at go and look at the abilities that they've ones. got because like what you're describing, like that missile going around, like every fucking shmup has these like things where you're just. Like you're, you're traveling along and just yeah. like this, like some sort of a force field around you. Not really a force field, but like it's a it's a dot that spins around you to protect you if you get hit by anything. And then it like it's like in Sonic where if it gets hit, then that disappears, but it, it saves you from getting hit. Um, yes. But yeah, it's it's thought though to check out those sorts of games for inspiration, especially because if you've got a, a ship or something, then I mean that's does it need to be a ship? I guess uh, that could change at some point as well. Yeah, it doesn't have to be. Well, the the idea behind it was. It was going to be um, like Wipeout, 
Mm. So I wanted to dig into that nostalgia side of things. So I wanted it to be like Tokyo sci-fi, right? Um, like futuristic cyberpunk, um, it, yeah. cyberpunk, and it kind of lends in with like aliens. So it's like futuristic. So we've got aliens that are like the enemies, sure. um, like alien animals. Yeah, and... I, I don't think you have to overthink it too much. Um, it's no, like I think people like get like it's it's it doesn't need like a deep story or backstory. It's like why why are they in Tokyo and stuff? And like <laughs> it's just yeah. yeah, yeah, it doesn't it does like they're they're facing the camera, so it doesn't make yeah, sense. It's, it's pure aesthetic, <clears throat> right? Yeah, yeah. So that's 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 what I've been working on. It just came out of the blue. It was because it was mulling around my mind, like oh, I could do a Vampire Survivors game, and it was just going around my mind and then the realization was oh i could do a physics based one because of all my work on focus find which is all oh, the demos coming out in a couple of weeks we're going to be uh, i might as well do a shout out there focus find is going to be in the um the steam next fest so check us out there i learned a lot of physics based stuff because it's it uses the physics engine in unity yep. and i just thought oh i could lend those skills that i've learned to a little tiny little mini game mm. um that i could release this year maybe even before um yeah probably before um focus fine so they'll come out maybe at the same sort of time or maybe this game might come out before depending on how i mean long the, it takes us to i finish. wouldn't recommend doing that like if you've got like a if you've got two games coming out at the same time that like you're like headline and it's for one like I, it's it's not that i don't recommend it i do, I'll, I'll be kind of blunt about it it'll be impossible like you won't be able to do that yeah uh, so yeah. subvert your expectations a little bit when it comes to that like yeah I mean, is it impossible? I'm not sure, but is it is it intelligent? Probably not. <laughs> like, I wouldn't. No, I, I it's wouldn't, probably I wouldn't not. wish that upon my worst enemy. Um, no. Well, yeah. one one I'm doing in the day, my working hours, and then one's just on the side. So, yeah. yeah. And and as you can see, I've only spent a few hours on it. It's not. It's not. Um, sure. Yeah, yeah. Have fun with it. Yeah. You know? Like that's that's the main thing. That's the good thing about prototypes. Like you just experiment and and and, and cracking on. You know. Mm. Like it's always good. It's is, always good. It too. is fun. Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. I was just going to say, that, but that's exactly what, why I'm really excited about this is because I, I just this on its own is fun. Uh, I've got now. nothing else. You, you, get, now, into, you, get, you get into the polish stage and then it will turn into work. Like that's, that's, uh, what, that's what usually happens. I mean, I guess yeah. this is the lesson you're learning though, right? Like you're, you're doing middleware to sort of get your sort of muscles flexed in terms of like finishing a game to like completion and just getting used to that cycle because prototypes yeah. are fun. Like I've, I've made a bunch of prototypes in my career and just like every time like you get really, really fun. And as soon as it gets into that second phase of, all right, now you got to start making artwork and polishing this code. It's just like, Ugh, like this isn't fun yeah. anymore. Like this is, and you've got to like hold on to that vision of what you were going for and originally. Right. But yeah, that's, yeah, it's, it's, that's tough, man. But yeah, I, I would say pace this out a little bit. Like I'm not saying like pace out the game, like for it to be like a multi-year project or anything, but just, make sure like your two games aren't hitting in the same exact window because like that's just oh, a risk yeah. disaster for both projects like even being honest but yeah yeah that would i be can always shelve this i can always shelve this and come back to it i can you know sure. it, it, it's going to be waiting here there's no the t- there's not much time sensitivity with vampire survivors like like roguelite stuff because that ship has sailed so mm. this is you know i'm not doing this for any um commercial reasons like i don't think this is going to make me much money yeah it's just a bit of fun it's, a, it's always like, i was skills. about to say like it's always important to do these sort of prototypes regardless of how busy you get and stuff because like you're, you're just to sort of reignite that because you'll get it's like right now i've got two projects like one for work and one like on the side and both of those are in the polish stage and it's like oh, right you know like about that i'm in that cycle right now of yeah. you know like it isn't that and, and and that's why it's so frustrating to work with programmers sometimes because all they want to do is work on prototypes and then as soon as like they get out the prototype stage they're just like shiny thing over there and then they run off and yeah like where oh, you going come back <laughs> yeah come back come back no finish yeah. this yeah exactly so yeah. it's yeah it's it's a funny old business i mean but yeah middleware is always a good thing to do yeah so it's a middle game yeah and it's weird because it's actually my first game so my first game is my multi-year project i'm doing it all wrong so my first game is my (laughs) multi-year multi-person project i haven't even done my first game and then my next game which is you know could come out before my first game is going to be a middle game so yeah yeah, i'm i'm all messed up anyway (laughs) this is terrible (laughs) you're learning stuff right like that's the main thing um 
Yeah. There's yeah. no right way of doing this stuff anymore anyway. It's like I was like we were talking in the pre show and how frustrated I was about like how the industry keeps changing every five years and it's driving me insane. Um because yeah. we just want to make games. But because of that, there's no like um secure way of how to make a game, you know. It's not like the film industry where it's like, Okay, you need you need these people and you need this equipment and you need like this schedule, or whatever and you can just yeah. like if you've got your script you're you're ready to go, right? And it's like games aren't like that whatsoever. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it's just kind of uh, doing it the wrong way isn't really a thing. Yeah. Like as long as you're doing it, you know, and you are. So like you're doing it the right way, in my opinion. So yeah, just keep yeah. going away. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm hopeful and it's fun. That's the main thing. And I'm, I'm going to try and do it as quickly as possible so that I keep remembering that fun that I'm having now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, that's the plan. So right. that it's still fresh in my memory when I'm actually in the polish stage. Yeah, by, by the time um, you realize that it's it's getting boring, it would have been finished. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's a good way of doing it. Yeah. But the plan is, yeah, get at least get like one ship done in terms of like how like, acceleration, speed, cornering, shields, exhaust, yada, yada, yada. Yeah. Um, one arena done and like leveling up done so that I can release a demo and then... Once the demo's out, I'll work on like three arenas and like three more ships yeah. and get all those balanced. Because what you said before, it's all about balance in these sort of games. Like it's got to be balanced to be fun, yeah. to get people keep playing for a long period of time. Because that's like, that's what these games are all about, right? So it's good for streamers yeah. um, because they can find something. If they, put the, if they put the hours in, they'll find something. So like they'll be able to unlock the final version of the laser, which might be huge and massive and yeah. just cause the, so the much un, damage. The unlocks are going to be great. a main driver for dopamine hits anyway. Um, yeah. I, get, I, get, I always reference this, but one game that really like opened my eyes to this more than anything was uh, Death Stranding of all things. Like the one of the most boring games in human history. Like I, I don't mean, like I mean that affectionately, like I love the game, but it is very boring. Like in terms of like, you're just walking through like this Icelandic landscape, delivering packages, just like you just, you you're walking Person. that's it like no, yeah. the scenery doesn't really change like you just you're just walking you're going in a straight line and trying to avoid rocks and stuff but the thing that makes it intriguing is like every time you get any upgrade the upgrades are so meaningful like they're so small like they make that task so much easier like it, it sort of yeah. gives you incentive to get to the next upgrade and you just like it pushes you all the way through to the, the end of the game and these sorts mm. of games are similar like in that like if you don't have meaningful upgrades or you give them too fast or like you don't pace them out in a the correct way or like just as the the yeah. player is like push through something they get this upgrade like yes sort of thing like finally you know i can yeah. do this now awesome like now i can do that task easier you know that those those are the sorts of balancing acts that you're gonna have to really play with to sort of get this game feeling good yeah that's what i'm hoping yeah yeah, yeah. All right. cool all right well so there we uh, go. if oh, you yeah. one thing i'll go another thing you said, think about the play thing. I had a thought, because you said, um, when I first told you about it, one of the things you said was how to keep people entertained during the actual gameplay. Yeah. And one idea I had that I, it's, I copied off another game, um, I can't remember the name of it now, uh, it, like fetch quests. So it gives you, incentivizes you to visit different parts of the map as yes. well. Yeah. You could do that in multiple ways as well. Like you can you can spawn random items uh, in the area, or you can like do the opposite effect, which is what Battle Royale has done so well in that genre, which is limiting an area as well and forcing people into another area. You could do it that way. Yeah. Because um, like yeah, I mean that's that's where the expansion of this game could really come in is that idea of like okay, we had multiplayer and now there's two players and now we had a Battle Royale mode and we just make the map twenty times bigger because all you're really doing is just duplicating stuff out, right? And just yeah. everyone's trying to kill each other but also trying to kill enemies and then another player comes along and you have to take them out and then you gain all their yeah. stuff and then do you focus on just get getting, smaller and smaller getting you go. points or do you try and kill the enemies right and that's where people? objectives come into play right because like that's yeah. another thing as well like how 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 do you finish this game like you know like maybe you don't maybe it's just like the the waves just get harder and harder like it's like tetris right until the game crashes yeah um and then well that even that's got finished now i know so that's that poor kid um oh yeah on a side note did you see that um yeah damn host on sky news oh I yeah have, yeah just one person needs picking up and throwing out the building is is oh jesus that was bad it was pretty bad yep yep <laughs> oh, it, it, in the it, comment it, it, if you it, know it, what we're talking about yeah i mean yeah it, 
yeah, comment if, if tell us your thoughts on the that. Sky Reporter, on yeah, the Sky Reporter as well, because yeah, even after. 30, 40 years of this industry existing, you know, and even though it's making more money than the music and movie industry combined, like we still have zero respect uh, for the general public. So there it is. Yeah. Um, speaking of respect, um, <laughs> where can people uh, find you so they can go and respect you and, you and what you're working on? Okay. <laughs> that was a weird segue. Yeah, well, um, I tried. So my company uh, name is Acrylic Pixel. So if you Google that, you'll find my Twitter, my YouTube um you know linkedin tiktok all, all the social medias this game doesn't have a name yet and i haven't even posted about it yet this is literally the grand unveiling but then you've again you've talked sense into me and i should be posting little interesting clippity bits, clippity bits. uh on social media yep. just to keep people interested well the pachinko not... thing will do that like the whole you know... yeah the plinko thing yeah yeah, yeah. Pachinko so uh, plinko i'm not gonna do um i'm not gonna do a, a, a steam page until i have like a, a trailer ready so it'd be near the end like i've literally planned it out and it's like the week before launch so i'll have like a week of like marketing push um because that's when i'm probably gonna have a trailer because that's when the game's gonna be done so i'm doing it all in the right order for a change um (laughs) so i'm making the game when the game's nearly done i'll have enough information to put on a trailer if that makes sense um absolutely yeah cool very cool yeah yeah, social media for now social media for now so that's uh, acrylic pixel all over the place. Google it; you will find him. He is the herpes of the internet. He can't get rid yes. of it. Yes. <laughs> but yeah, if you want to, if you want to, you can follow you can follow acrylic pixel on um, on Steam and yep. Focus Finds on Steam. Uh, that you by your when you're watching this, the demo is probably gonna be out. So true. go play the demo, Focus Find. Very true. All right. Yeah. Go go. Worth uh, saying that. Go check out Focus Find. Leave a review. All that sort of good stuff. Um, yeah. Helps. And what about you, Vin? What, what, where can we find your stuff? Uh, yeah, everywhere. Um, long gone, um, the game that I'm working on. Uh, so if you search Hillfort Games on any social media platform at this point, because I am sick of juggling them all, they're all there. Uh, so TikTok, YouTube, uh, Twitter, Blue Sky even, everything. You know, Instagram is blown up recently, so go and, go and follow there to sort of even everything out for me. That'd be nice. Um, I'm yeah. wishless long gone on Steam. Uh, that's it. I'm making a, a pixel art zombie thing, which people seem to be liking the look of. But... I need to get a demo out, and that's what I'm working on now. So, yeah, we'll see. Cool. Cool. And any suggestions for names of the game would be cool. Yeah, apart from, like, a Spaceship Survivor, because that's a bit on the nose. Yeah. Wipeout Survivor. I don't know. Wipeout Survivor. Yeah, it's, that's <laughs> very on the nose. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit too much. All right, until next time, thank you very much for watching. Like, subscribe, comment, all that sort of good stuff. Until next time, ta-ta. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.